Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. It has been a week since I last checked in for a recent reads video. It was definitely a slower reading week. I only read four things this week. That was basically just due to the fact that I wasn't listening to any audiobooks over this past week. Um, but let's jump straight in and talk about the books that I did manage to complete this week. So the first book that I read was Sister by Rosamond Lupton. This is a um, adult mystery novel. This is definitely, I would just say mystery as opposed to thriller. Um, it follows a woman who, it's kind of told with like a story kind of within a story in terms of that. We're following a, a, a woman whose sister went she find, she's living in she's originally from the UK she's now living in New York she gets a call basically that her sister's missing um has been missing for a couple of days she flies back to the UK um and then we know through the medium of her in her like mind or in some way telling the story actually it might be in letter form I can't remember telling the story to her presumably deceased sister um telling the story of the interviews that she's giving to the prosecutor's office who is prosecuting the case against someone um and like I said we assume it's for um that her like body's found and that it's a like murder no spoilers it happens pretty early on the body does get discovered pretty early on so you know the sister's been killed the police are assuming that it's a suicide but like I said we know that at the stage that we're at that someone is being prosecuted for this and she is telling her story to the sister of the interviews that she's giving to the prosecuting office about how she discovered what happened this i had mixed feelings on i loved the sister relationship um we really get a strong sense of the bond between the two sisters which i really really liked um but the mystery overall wasn't overly engaging and then the ending while basically predictable I also didn't like um and so and then this was just okay and I ended up giving this three stars oh I just hit myself in the teeth um I then read on ebook Beware Dawn by Anne M Martin this is the second book in the uh Babysitter's Club Mysteries series um this one follows uh Dawn and the other babysitters of course who are getting starting to get strange phone calls while they're babysitting like a lot of like um like no one talking um hang up calls and then they're also getting letters left on their like left on the door so like someone will ring the doorbell they'll go out there's no one there but there'll be like a letter left from like mr x um and in addition to that going on at the moment is that the kids in the town are running a competition um like the best babysitter like the babysitter of the month or something like a, the best babysitter and there's a little bit of competitiveness going on between the babysitters because they all want to be crowned like the best babysitter now if you saw when i talked about the first book in the mysteries series which was stacy and the missing ring i my complaint in that one was that there was no actual mystery the babysitters weren't trying to solve a mystery that is more the case in this one is that there is what is going on with my hair is it there we go is that there is an actual mystery going on in this one like you're trying to figure out who is calling um who is mr x while they're being left these letters and what's going on so i really liked that there was more of a mystery and like this one was just generally like more fun for me than the previous one my only gripe and i didn't take off any kind of anything for the rating but it annoyed me is that in this one there are charges and i think they've come up previously in the series and like the main series but I've only reread up to like book 20 and then these are books are published like a couple of years later when the mystery series started. There is a family called the Hobarts, like was one of the families that they babysit for that have three boys. Hobart, funnily enough, because Hobart is a city in Australia um, and their family is Australian, apparently have um, emigrated to the United States um, and are now living in Stony Brook. But <laughs> the terrible representation of Australians was like I was like offended I was like this is so one like fact that their surname is Hobart I was just like come on Hobart is actually the city that I was born in I was like this, this is ridiculous and then <laughs> one of the boys apparently describes one of the brothers there's three boys in this family the oldest brother is um actually a little bit older he's the same age as Mallory who is one of the um, younger members of the babysitters club and they're like maybe going to be potentially like starting a relationship in this book 
I mean, they're 11, but it's like, you know. Um, and <laughs> at one point they're talking about how this boy described Mallory as a bonza Sheila, meaning like, <laughs> as like being put in there as like something that like an, an Australian would say. The only people who would use a phrase, like we do say kind of Sheila, but not a lot. The only people who would ever describe someone as, oh, she's a bonza Sheila, you would get that in like a really rural area of Australia, maybe like normal everyday Australians are not saying bonza Sheila. Yes, these books were written in the early 90s, but I still don't believe that like a nine-year-old, sorry, an 11-year-old boy is describing anyone as a bonza Sheila. And then it's described because they're all of them, the, like the sp like comedic thing that's supposed to be happening is that the babysitters of the club are like, what the heck is a bonza Sheila? And they're, and they're describing like, oh, bonza means good, which is correct. But then they're like, and Sheila is a female kangaroo. So therefore it just means like girl. And like, so bonza Sheila means like a great girl. Yes, bonza Sheila means great girl. But a female kangaroo is not a Sheila. That is not a thing. I'm pretty sure a female kangaroo. Now I could be wrong, but I think a female um, kangaroo is just a doe. I don't, like, it's not Sheila. That, that is not not a thing I was like when I read this I was like what is this like this is ridiculous and also I know because it was in books for kids because I was like I now feel like there'll be kids who maybe read this of this age who like you know aren't from Australia so don't aren't that familiar with kangaroos and are like now have probably been growing up their whole lives thinking that a female kangaroo is called a Sheila it's not that's not a thing just so you know that really irritated me I didn't take any thing off of such a tiny part of the book but as an Australian reading this I was just like what is happening so I just thought I'd point it out to you. Uh, the next book that I read, oh, I hope we don't get any cats flying around in here just to warn you. But when I came in the house earlier, a fly escaped into the house with me. And my cat Giles is absolutely losing his mind trying to attack this fly. And the fly is now in this room. So Giles has just walked away. I don't think he's realized that it's in here. But just in case we all of a sudden get a cat flying into shop, I thought I'd warn you. The next book I read was Fine by Amy Leah Murphy. This is a digital copy that I received in exchange for an honest review. It is one of my neck alley arcs. This one is already out and published. It is available in case you're interested. This one is YA, but is a mix between kind of mystery, I guess, and more like contemporary. It was compared to Sarah Dessen and um, Courtney Summers, who are two of my favorite YA, like contemporary mystery. Well, Sarah Dessen is contemporary, and then Courtney Summers is kind of contemporary with more like heavy or like mystery themes a lot of the time. <sighs> oh, I just thought of something all of a sudden just entered my brain. I did want to say trigger warnings in this for stillbirth and uh, the death of um, a baby. Just like be aware of that going in because it is very prominent in this story. <sighs> okay, so the story that we're getting in this find by Emily and Murphy is that we're following... Um, a girl, a teenage girl who is now, I think, I think she's just turned 18 in the story. She's about 18. So this could like technically kind of be classified as um, new adult. I think they're kind of going for just like a general overall audience. Like anyone could read this, but um, it's following an 18 year old girl who, when she was, I can't remember how old she was. I think 10 or 11, her older sister who was 17 at the time went missing. Um, and, I'm pretty sure it says in the synopsis, vanished without a trace. Um, and so she's now, it's been like years later, she's now older and her and her sister were really close when her sister was around. Um, and she's really, really struggled to deal with the like loss of her sister. She is a very like angry teenager, a lot of anger. Um, you know, she's not sure what she wants to do with her life. She's fi just finished high school, barely scraped through finishing high school, is like can't keep a job, um, isn't going to college, like has no real plans or future. Um, and she basically ends up now that she's 18, going to the police station and getting access to her sister's file and is reading through the file to try to put together and find out what happened with her sister. Um, I have mixed feelings about this book as well. Again, the sister relationship, I quite liked the portrayal of. It's not as prominent in this one, but I did still like the sister relationship. It, I don't know how to talk about this without like really trying to, um, like really spoiling things. So the author was really trying something different in the way that she was like writing this story, which I appreciated. The ending 
was incredibly unsatisfying. It wasn't shocking, but it was very irritating as a reader. When you get to the end, it was very much a situation of me feeling like this just pisses me off. Um, and I feel like you were left with a lot of unanswered questions. I'll just say that. Giles is now meowing his head off out there because he's upset about the fly. So I'm sorry if you can hear that in the background. And the final book that I read this week was The Twins by J.S. Lark. This is another digital copy that I received in exchange for an honest review through NetGalley. This one is an adult thriller and is about twins. So we're following a woman who is now like she's an adult, has a grown daughter um, and a husband when her twin sister all of a sudden comes back into her life and we understand that there has been some kind of huge falling out between the two twins um, and that they're now like they haven't spoken in years and this twin sister is coming back and really trying to get back in to uh, the other sister's life and um, really and like the other sister's really resistant against is really is just like I don't want this girl in my life but the husband and the daughter are like no like we want to like you know let her in and blah 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 so it's about that but we go back in time and we get the story from when they were like young like kind of through their growing up like when they were like incredibly close because they were like these twins that were just like the most identical twins that like ever existed and they like fought with one brain and like were like the closest people ever um we get like some of that through their childhood and then events that kind of led to uh the split of them oh I should say we know from the beginning that one of the sisters has died so we know that the, sorry we know that the sister and her daughter were in the car were in a car and that they've been in this terrible road accident and then we then go back like I said so, so that we're getting the point where the twin sister comes back into the life so we've kind of got three time periods going on we've got the time period when the sister's coming back into the life trying to get back into the you know into the family the childhood but then we also have the time period of following the accident kind of the aftermath and like trying to figure out what's going on this had a couple of twists in it I saw everything coming I don't know if everyone would necessarily but like to me it was I was like okay this is gonna have happened and this is gonna have happened and that's exactly what happened um it's very much like a some suspension of belief required in like some to some extent but I mean that's pretty typical of thrillers generally the thing that got a little bit more annoying about this one is that the author was so repetitive like she really hits you over the head with like all the details about how close these twins are and how identical they are and how they think with one mind and all of that like she just repeats it over and over and over and over and over again and it honestly got a little bit irritating I'm not gonna lie but generally this was like an enjoyable thriller in the end I gave it 3.25 stars and that's it. Those are all of the books that I read this week. Um, in terms of what I'm currently reading, I am technically still reading The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. I just didn't make, I didn't listen to it at all this week. I haven't made any progress on it. Um, so I am still 30% of the way through that. Um, hopefully we'll either decide to continue on or DNF that uh, this week, this coming week. Um, and then in terms of my physical read, I'm currently reading A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGuinness. Not going to talk too much about this because I will talk about this in my recent reads video next week. I have made, I'm almost finished this though. I'm on page 289 of I think 374 or something like that. So I've got less than 100 pages left, hoping to actually finish this today. Um, I'm really excited to give you my thoughts on this because so far I'm genuinely really enjoying this. And that's all I say about that. So that's it. Those are all of the books uh, that I've read this past week. Um, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. If you've read any of these books, if you've got any thoughts on them, or if you want to chat to me about what you guys have been reading recently, I would love to know. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys. Bye.